Well, the weather for the whole of the south of England will continue as it has for the next few weeks. It's going to be hot and moist, with temperatures rising steadily as time goes on. There's a chance of steamy moments as we move into the... Ah, sod it. We never wanted to do this. We never wanted to be weathermen and women, making innuendos about hot atmospheres and drizzly countries. We didn't want to be child-friendly. We didn't want to bang on about being for over 18s only. We want to talk about our sexy adventures. We want to be lifestylers, leaping from bush to bush as we sail down the rivers of British sex clubs and mountains of crazy experiences. The cheeky purple mamba, the liquid silk pumped liberally into our hand, the rodeo classic brief harness complete with Tantus curve, the enjoy pure one stainless steel dildo, the hot octopus digit, the ever so short messages on fab swingers, the sexy friends on Twitter, and the mighty vanilla alternative. With my best girlie by my side, we'd swing, swing, swing. Get in the gym or to your car. Without advice, you could go far. We fuck things up and we make mistakes. We talk about our sexy dates. It's getting hard for this to rhyme. Just as well, cause it's bed. Welcome to episode 82 of the Bed Hops podcast. My name is Mr. H. I'm Mrs. H. Thanks for joining us today. We've got a ton of stuff to talk about. Yeah. And Oh, it's just loads of stuff. Oh, great. Thank you. Very helpful (laughs) as ever, Mrs. H. Um, We've got a few things to catch up on. So the first one that I want to talk about is PCAP. So if you don't know, PCAP was this delightful event that we signed up to um, be presenters. Podcaster Palooza. Hosts. Yeah. Podcaster yeah. Palooza, it was called. General buffoons. Yeah. So we were going to do like a live thing and it was going to be in Miami. Yeah. Right. Uh, but unfortunately, because Miami seems to be the epicenter of God knows what's Everything going on in. Virusy. Yeah. So um, unfortunately, Podcaster Palooza for this year was cancelled. Um, now, Kate from Swinging Down Under, who's who's running the shebang. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shebang. <laughs> shebang. Yeah. I like shebang. Yeah. All right. Organising the shenanigans. Fancy shebang lately? Yeah, I do fancy a shebang. <laughs> um, now, she's organised another event for next year. I believe May? it's going to be... Yeah, I think there's going to be a few things going on next year. Mm. So uh, look up Podcaster Palooza for more information on that. But in the meantime, what we are doing is a virtual PCAP. Oh, yeah. So this is an opportunity to... I think it's uh, 25 bucks. And I get to say bucks for a change here. <laughs> uh, not 25 young deer. Um, All right, 20, yeah. 25 bucks, 25 20, clams. Cl- no, not clams. <laughs> I think clams are pounds, aren't they? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, $25 is All probably right. the better mm-hmm. better one. Um, and your whole household, should you want your whole household to attend, uh, can virtually sign in over the 28th to the 30th of August um, and see a number of podcasters and media producers and content producers talk all about sex and swinging and kinky things and all sorts of stuff mm. like that. So, and there'll be like DJ sets and yoga and some games and stuff, I think, from what I've seen on Twitterverse. Is there? Yeah. I, I, I hadn't Haven't read Haven't you read it? I, no. I've read it for once. I just read the bit that had my name <laughs> on it and that, that was, you know. How convenient. <laughs> well, let me tell you then, because I have read it. I'll tell you for why. I'll tell, tell us you for why. why. Uh, well, what I just said, there's DJ sets and yoga and games. <laughs> are, there, are there gadgets and gizmos are plenty? Lions and tigers. <laughs> and who's it and what's it's galore. Anyway, well, there's a whole load of stuff. Yeah, so we're super fun. Well, we're going to be on it and we've got a slot in there at some point. I don't know our exact time. It feels like it's because all the times are a bit weird because um, they're not in UK times. Well, no. No. Because we're all over the place. Yeah, exactly. Anyways, um, look that up. Have fun. <laughs> Join us. Um, if you want to buy a ticket, I believe it is at podcast dash a dash palooza dot com right mm-hmm. forward slash uh, buy dash now all right william shatner thanks <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit too it was very staccato it was a bit staccato nice one, wasn't, wasn't it, it? <laughs> <laughs> were you actually trying to speak in morse code <laughs> dash dash wait you're blinking three times Does that mean you want help yeah, I or always do you do. just want drink <laughs> save me please somebody save me so anyway that's a uh, virtual pcap so mm. it'd be awesome if you could join us uh we're planning to do some stuff for that uh-huh. at some point so um it will be. Well, we haven't got much time left. Though, so. <laughs> and by we, it's mostly me planning to do some stuff. Wow, um, Mrs. H. How dare you? Oh. I will show up and be amazing. <laughs> well, that's what you always do. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you for noticing. Planning prevents piss poor performance penis. Anyway, 
What's always about penises? What? I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> the other thing uh, that you can join us on, and we're giving away loads of dates and stuff here. This is pretty cool. Because you're like a virtual speaking diary. I am. And this, this it's is amazing because a... you're never very organised. <laughs> <laughs> I am extremely organised in my own head and in my own way. So on the 22nd of August at 9pm, that's UK time, people in the UK, 9pm our time, we will be doing another quiz. Oh my God, that's what you're talking about. Yes, we are. <laughs> See, <laughs> Once again, I'll show up and be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Just it, tell me when, where and what you want me to do. Well, exactly. I'll tell you exactly what I want you to do. Uh, this time, it's not just us. So we are joined by the lovely Bradford and Angela. Uh, mm. Bradford being my twin and Angela not being my twin. Well, no. No. But uh, we're joined by them and they're going to be co-hosting a quiz. So we're going to have questions. So by the by. By the by, yeah. Mm. I, I, was, I was getting to that point. Well, in you know, a very convoluted round the house's blah, way. Blah, 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 blathering on about Bradford being your twin again. I know, that's right. We are twins, but different in so many ways. <laughs> Do you have one single plop? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> 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 Anyways, we're going to be hosting a quiz. Um, it's going to be questions about geeky stuff, sexy stuff, fun stuff. So just a quiz, really. Stuff. Stuff. We're going to ask you <laughs> questions or ask you questions. You're going to answer them. It's probably going to be on YouTube and you can join in, have some fun. You can ask us some shiznay and uh, then we'll probably just go off topic and start rambling and talking. And you should point out that the 9pm UK time is, what, 6am Sydney time? Yes, 6am Sydney time. They are getting up fucking mm, early. They really are. Yeah, they're very, very dedicated. Hopefully they'll turn up. Well, yeah, me too. I mean, I think they'll, <laughs> I think they'll phone it in from their bed. <laughs> oh, it's really sweet. It'll be I, really super early for them. It will be. Um, but, you know, just regular evening time for us. Yeah. So we win. We are the winningest. On this occasion, we win. But you could win too if you take part in the quiz. So there's no fee for that one. You can just rock up <laughs> and join us and answer some questions and then for Wait, and the prizes? Fun. Yes, bed hopper points. Ah, the infamous bed hopper points, which I know. no one can redeem because they either A, don't exist or because of coronavirus. Well, to be fair, you kept trying to give coffees away. <laughs> I for, know. It just doesn't yeah, work. No. Well, not unless you live near me. <laughs> so if you happen to be in our house, invited, of course, uninvited guests, you know, not a good, cool, trendy thing. Uh, Mrs. H will exchange your bed hopper points for making you a cup of coffee once she's figured out how to use the coffee machine. I was going to say, you are uh, promising quite a lot here. I, know. I will be getting you to make the coffee. You are not a barista extraordinaire. <laughs> This is true. Anyway, uh, join us, uh, bring along a few drinks, uh, bring along your mates if you like, and chuck us on this big screen and mm. you, in your front room if you've got YouTube on it, and it'll be a jolly good time that we can all have. Fab. Fab. So the other thing, and part of the main thrust of this episode... Gosh, you have a plethora of stuff today, don't you, to talk about? Well, actually, I tell you what, I'm, I'm going to jump ahead slightly. So this, this episode is, is formed mostly of two parts. Okay. Part one, we're going to be talking about something that's coming up very soon. Mm -hmm. And part two is where we have some amazing special guests that came and stayed with us. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk to them about some stuff that's been going on in their lives. So we've got the incredible, the amazing Kiwi and Cherie from... Sharon is caring. There we go. Oh, See, look, look at me ending your sausages again. <laughs> I know, right? And, and I'm sure we say the exact same thing when we start talking to them uh, later on. So they're going to be yep. putting out this this um, this episode at the same time. So we thought uh, since it was recorded in our little podcast room, we tack it on to the end of this episode um, so you can have a nose and have a good old listen. We had a lovely yep. time with them. So thank you very much, guys, for joining us. Mm. Um, sounds like I'm wrapping up now, doesn't it? It does. You Bye. Know. Yeah, thanks. Bye. It's been great. No, no, you hang up first. <laughs> Anyways, um, so that's the second part of this episode. The first part is about something that we mentioned earlier in the year. Now, back in January, January. February time, uh, we... Pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, yeah. We had uh, some contact from a media company called 1911 TV. Mm. And they asked us if, they, if we wanted to be on a documentary about swinging in the UK. Yes. And we said, Ah! That's exactly what we said. We immediately ran away. Yes. We <laughs> went, oh God, no, that sounds terrifying. We'd have to show our faces. Uh, no, thank you very much. So we hid in our cupboards. Well, not literally, but we, we went away and well, reflected. And, and reflected <laughs> and then decided that actually, if we were to do the show, that we'd have to come out of our cupboards. Yeah. Oh, yeah, significantly. And not, not be wearing any hidden masks or anything. Yeah. It was an interesting one because we... Uh, 
we really want to show the lifestyle in a really positive light. Yeah. And so many of the documentaries, especially in the UK about swing, have involved or dogging, have involved dodgy masks and a bit of a send up music. And it just makes the whole hobby that we love so much look a bit shit. Yeah, it's cast really, really negative. Um, it's brought really negative stereotypes to life for me, all the, the sort of dodgy documentaries we've seen in the past. Uh, and if anything, you know, try being associated with anything like that would just make us run for the hills. So we were just really, really careful. I think more than anything, weren't we? That we wanted to be sure we, and we wanted to, yeah, as you say, promote everything in a positive way. So we gave it some, some thought and mm. then we decided that we were going to do it. <laughs> so we did. Yeah. And we'll tell you a little bit more about the filming in a minute, but what I want to mention first, and so I've been on a date frame of mine mm -hmm. because we can't go on any dates, <laughs> is that on August the 24th in the UK at 10 p.m. on Channel 4, you'll be able to see the Swingers documentary. Oh, my God. With us in it, yes. I assume. I mean, we're on the poster still. Yeah. So one assumes we're still in the documentary. <laughs> we're still in it. We can't have fucked it up that badly. Oh, can you imagine just like one minute of airtime? Way so famous. That, yeah, that, that might not be so bad. So one thing we will say is that we've not seen the documentary as yet. Nope. And so, we don't get to see it either until that day. Until the day that, it, in fact, we get to see it at the same time that you get to see it. Well, mm. assuming that you're watching it live. If you record it and watch it later, then we'll see it before you. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Infallible logic as ever. Yes. The point is, we haven't seen it. And we'll see it at the same time as everyone else sees it. So firstly, Mrs. H, I've got a bit of a suite of questions that oh I've written God. down. Oh my God, I embraced and ready. Are you? For you. I thought you said questions. you embraced. Oh. Did okay. we? Do we embrace? Do we embrace? We can embrace. Can we? We are capable of embracing. <laughs> Anyways, so I've got some questions that I wanted to run through just right. to, to bring this to life. So when, can you tell me a little bit about what, what was the documentary about? All right, I can. Uh, it sounds like I'm going for an interview. I'm a bit nervous now. Um, <laughs> I didn't bring any little notes for me. I'm just I'm going to mark you down for <laughs> bringing this to my attention. Thank you. Oh my God. I feel really nervous. Will I get the job? F plus click. <laughs> That's the test. All right. So the documentary is about um, swinging in the UK. Well, that was broad. <laughs> I know. I think I succinctly wrapped that up. <laughs> so as I understand it. Okay. It is about a number of different people within the swing community. Oh, yeah, that. So a number of couples, <laughs> single people, um, an older lady, um, all coming together yeah. to go to a club on one night. And the, the club being uh, Liberty Elite. Is that correct? I think so. I can't quite remember it the name. Is. It is. Oh, good. <laughs> Bodes well, doesn't it? <laughs> well, it was focused around this one club. And I believe the owners of that club are also in the documentary and talking about running the club and yeah. et cetera. And the way in which the documentary was sort of presented to us was very much a real look behind the scenes at what happens in lifestyle, mm -hmm. um, trying not to dumb it down and trying to show it as a really valid way of living your life. Through a sort of candid um, series of uh, interviews with all the agenda people that are in the, the programme. So mm -hmm. we're all interviewed about our various journey into how we got started, why we do it, what we do, and then all leading up to everybody going to this club. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they spent a whole day with us. It was a very long day. It was a very long day <laughs> uh, where we were pretty much followed doing everything from making cups of tea to walking yeah. the dog um, to chatting to chatting each other. to all sorts of things. And mm. it was it was a really interesting time because we just got followed around by some cameras and they were just constantly asking us questions about the lifestyle. Yeah, I had. I mean, to be fair, I had no idea that so much went into you know just what essentially will be a very small amount of footage. Which yes. is ironic because you have no idea how much effort goes into a podcast either. <laughs> What's a podcast? <laughs> exactly. Just for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that we, we got followed around um, by the people mm. filming that. And yeah. then we went to the, the club on, on that, not that a, a night, later but a, date, later like date, a couple of weeks magic later. Magic television. And, um, wasn't it Valentine's Day? I think it was kind of like the day, it was like it, Valentine's it weekend. It was a Valentine's Day weekend club thing. Yeah. I remember it being... Valentine's themed because there were just hearts everywhere and stuff. Yeah. So then they followed us around the club and <laughs> yes. uh, recorded our conversations and yeah. And we got and then to after the club as well, we had another series of conversations, didn't we? Yeah. It was interesting because um, there weren't that many people at the club and, and club. 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 <laughs> um, 
And I think that's, that's, you know, really because not a lot of people are very keen about showing their face in terms of being in the lifestyle. Funny that. Uh, well, but at this point, we hadn't really decided to put our faces well, out there. Well, what we should, pre- sorry, preamble this with is we did reveal our faces on New Year's Eve. Yes. Uh, on Twitter. Yeah. So we, we had just tentatively kind of revealed our faces, mm-hmm. but only very, very recently prior yeah. to that being filmed. So we were still very nervous and like, whoa, this is quite a new for us to do that. Yeah. But I'm, you know, in terms of people being on the show, I'm sure they had quite a difficult time getting people to, to turn so, up yeah. and actually reveal their faces because, you know, you are outing yourself effectively. You're going on television mm. in front of a number of millions of people or whatever. Millions, millions eh? Oh people. my goodness. <laughs> uh, well, one assumes eventually that it'll catch up to millions by the time it gets out there and it'll probably go through various different TV networks and yeah. stuff over the years. But, and you know, but it's interesting about the, the whole reveal you're facing because... And, and this is the thing, it, it would lovely. It would be lovely for this to be a world where you could just talk about this to anybody and not receive any judgment or shame and that kind of thing. And, you know, equally other people want to maybe stay anonymous because actually that adds a little bit of a thrill to, you know, the dynamic of what you do. Well, and that's, that's fine true. too. But, but I think that, that kind of harkens back to why we wanted to do it in the yeah. first place. And I think for us, um, I, I, I for one was, was really worried that we'd get some idiot on, <laughs> on television other than myself who would make this thing look bad and like it was sleazy and horrible and, and and just it would descend mm. into one of those um one of those features like we've talked about like the dogging thing or whatever and it would just ridicule the lifestyle that we're in yeah. now of course there's every chance that it could do that that's perfectly <laughs> possible i hope it won't but but by us being in it, we hope that we could steer it a little bit mm-hmm. and put across some of our views and really some of the positive things that we've experienced uh, with being in this this swinging lifestyle. Mm, I agree. And hopefully it won't come across as a cheap, smutty pastime and it's more of a, this is a lifestyle choice and this is what we get from it. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think the other thing was, you know, we did it because we do a podcast and it'd be nice to get more people to listen to that podcast. That too. Yeah. What's, what's the podcast? Sorry. Asking for my friend again. <laughs> Great. So, but, but I think really it was a bit, for me, it felt very altruistic in that I wanted to do it because I wanted to help the community and I want mm. that community to be seen in a better light. And if it means that we get more people that go, oh, that swinging stuff, that looks right fun. <laughs> let's join that community or let's be part of that and let's dip our toes in. Yeah. That means there's more people for us to fuck. Wow. You just went there. Well, you know. <laughs> but that was a big leap. It was a big leap, <laughs> but it's not untrue. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Sorry, there's more people that can positively experience the lifestyle. Right. There's more people that we can have sex with. Oh my God. <laughs> more people that we can get to know in a lovely social um, meeting first. <laughs> yes, exactly. I, I think people are fairly understanding of our style and our approach to this. Yeah, we so. don't just rock up and bang. No, we, we do not rock or up and bang. bang. Sorry, as you said. <laughs> so was it fun? You mean the filming or the, the the concept of appearing in the documentary? The filming? The filming. Yeah. Oh, whew. it was, uh, although I did find it extremely um, tiring, actually. You find getting out of bed tiring? Oh, shush. Oh, I sh- do. You shush. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I meant um, it was really quite strange having people follow you around for a whole day, pretty much. And, you know, there wasn't really much kind of time away from that. And I understand why, why we do it, but it was quite new for me because I'd never really kind of been involved in anything before like that. And I was surprised how, how tiring I found the whole thing. It was fun though. See, I found it quite strange because I'm quite used to presenting to the camera. (laughs) <laughs> rather than having a natural conversation and being filmed. Oh, that was hilarious, actually. I do remember you getting told off so many times for going straight into, like, presenter mode almost. Hey, I'm Mr. Wright. Yeah. Welcome to my TV show. <laughs> yeah. And and talking to the camera rather than me. And the number of times they were like, oh, could you just not look at the camera? <laughs> Whereas I had no problem with that because I didn't want to look at the camera anyway. <laughs> so I was a natural at not looking at the camera. <laughs> I thought it was quite fun. I think, you know, we spent a a large chunk of time with them. The reality is, of course, you know, out of all that time, the the TV show in itself is Mm. not a series. It's just a one-off documentary. It's 60 minutes long. And I guess there's some ad breaks in there somewhere as well. So, you know, the amount of screen time that that we could get isn't going to be very big, I don't think. So, um, you know, 
it was a lot of effort, um, but I just hope that they capture the right bit. That, so there is going to be some level really of payout. that's really important, isn't it? So my next question was, are we nervous about it? I would say you're more nervous than me. I'm very nervous about it. But you're probably more nervous because of very different reasons, I think, because partly because you're not in control of this and yeah. someone else is presenting your story through their lens and it's not your content. Yeah, there is a bit of that. And, you know, I... I produce this podcast. I edit it. I I tend to steer it because you know no one else is going to show up no, and do the, the what's, hard what's work for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I think I am a little bit nervous from that perspective that it's not mine. And I think we, you know, I think we did a, a good job of putting across what we wanted to and and singing the praises and also some of the pitfalls of the lifestyle. Mm. Um, But also, you know, in the edit suite, almost anything is possible. So my, my other nervousness is that we come away looking a bit stupid or we don't do the community proud because I, I love this community and I love the people that we've met and the friends we've made. But on the whole, we've met some amazing Mm -hmm. people and we've met some amazing people on our holes. Um, so, <laughs> oh my God. You said that so subtly then. I just didn't realise how rude it was until I heard it. I was like, did he actually just say that? He did. Um, right. Okay. Uh, yeah. For me though, I think you're right. It, we did our utmost to try and come across in the way that we wanted this to be you know, seen and perception yeah. wise. It would be a real shame if they don't do that justice. But the trick is, is that we haven't seen this at all. Yeah. And we're not going to get to see it until it goes live. So there is a nervousness for me around wanting to have done the right thing for the community, not (laughs) wanting to look (laughs) a dick and also it, it being out of my own control. So for that reason, I kind of, I'm not out, but I'm also kind of just a bit, ooh. Now, also work colleagues know about it. Friends know about it. Family know about it. Yeah. I mean, just every man and his dog knows about it who... Um, and that's fine because um, we did it. We might as well be proud of doing it yeah. and not be sort of, you know, hiding it under a bushel and not not wanting to talk about it. Because what was the point of doing it in the first place? Well, and if that's you don't the want thing. anyone to know. Well, exactly. And, you know, we've seen the poster that's been sort of eked out or and at least a digital terrible. version. Yeah. I thought we came across pretty well on that poster. I'm quite, you know, Yeah. Quite I'm just hoping it's not plastered all over bus shelters in town. Are you going to be on the back of a bus? <laughs> Coming soon to a bus shelter near you. <laughs> my Janine. <laughs> Actually, no, no, my Janine is not on any of these posters. No, but pictures of it are around. Um, sure, sure, it's not. <laughs> you won't find a bus shelter. It's on enough. the latest Bedhoppers flyer that I've been distributing around town. <laughs> Going to get a set of coasters commissioned. Exactly that. So <laughs> my question now is, how can you watch it? How can you see it? Well, it's a bit difficult, tricky for us because we don't really watch terrestrial TV. <laughs> uh, but it's Channel 4 and there are a number of ways that you can find Channel 4 via iPlayer? Am I making that up? Yes, you are. I'm making that up. Yes. Don't so, listen to me. I don't even know what a podcast is. Over so, to you. Okay. So if you've got, if you're in the UK and you have a regular television and Brilliant. aerial with it, then we'll you pop round and watch it with you. You can watch it at 10 p.m. on Channel Four on the 24th of August, Great. and you can see it then. No problem. No bother. That's cool. You can even set your old VCR unit to record it and watch us in glorious low definition. Of <laughs> course. Perfect. If you've got some sort of computer or iPod, iPod, iPhone or iPad or some sort of streaming device, you know, other things are available. You can probably watch it on Four On Demand, which shows their live television. That's the fella, yeah. Four On Demand. Yeah, I think that's what it's called, but they have a four thing. That sounds like a sex show, actually. Four On Demand. Yeah. That sounds pretty good. It like does. a party of four people that just rock up. On Demand. On Demand. <laughs> I've called the Four On Demand hotline. <laughs> Where do you want us to party? Yay! <laughs> um, I'm not really making the sound effects that would, you know, sort of imply what's going on, but in my head, there's a really complex story. They arrive in like a party bus and they show up and they're rocking they, and they get the yeah. kill. It's great. It's fantastic. <laughs> um, anyway, so if you live in the UK, then you can see that stuff. I believe um, there are ways uh, of viewing that if you're not in the UK. Um, but you probably need to search that on the internet. I reckon Google will tell you. Yeah, probably Google. Yeah. So we don't know if they are um, hoiking it over to any other channels in other countries. I've no idea. I don't know. So um, for us, we, we wanted to record it. So we've been trying to figure out how do you record <laughs> television now? Because we don't have a don't. VCR or a DVD no. recorder. Or we just don't watch TV. Yeah, no, we just <clears throat> stream everything. Yeah. Yeah. How... How exciting. Yeah. So, you know, unless you're one of those two ways, we haven't got a fucking clue how you can watch it. So apologies (laughs) for that. Um, So would we do it again? I think I don't, I don't think I can answer that until I've seen this one. 
Yeah, that if was. I'm very honest about my nerves leading oh, up to now this. Now who's speaking <laughs> like chat? No. Um, yeah, I'm more nervous about the fact that I haven't seen it rather than it's too late now to do anything about how we appear. It's just more the unknown. So I don't know actually if we would do something like this again, assuming that we're okay and we look fine and we don't look like idiots. And yes, I would. Yeah. Totally. And I hope it's well received and I hope it. You know, people get some enjoyment and, you know, information out of watching it. Yeah, and- that's, you know, in an ideal world, I, you know, I want an average Joe Soap or whatever to watch it and go, oh, those people do not seem like freaks and yeah. weirdos. And, oh, I might like to try that. Mm, and yeah. I think, you know, I don't think we can ask for much more than that. Um, but much like yourself, I think until we've seen it. It's kind of, I'm, I'm so nervous at the moment and I'm really excited. Don't get me wrong. I'm really, really ready to watch this thing and see what's going on and, yeah. and check it out and, you know, and, and see some of those people that we spoke to on the night again on TV. <laughs> that was cool. Um, but I'm also kind of going, oh, I didn't control it. I've not been responsible for this. It's I'm in it. And how the hell do we, you know, yeah. and it's often when I have been on other things, um, for work and whatever, and someone else is responsible for editing it, they are friends or colleagues who aren't going to let you down. So, you know, as difficult it is, as it is, you kind of have to trust that these people will do the right do. thing. And they, you know, they're TV producers. I'm sure, I'm sure we know what they're doing. I'm sure they do. I'm, and I'm absolutely sure we know. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure they'll do us proud and do the community proud. What, what are you going to do if it's, if you don't like how we are? Well, <laughs> what if you don't like it, what if you come away thinking, I genuinely feel... That was awful. <laughs> I think I've got to be honest about it, to be fair. And I think, you know, otherwise I'm not true to myself. And, I'm, you know, I'm sat here talking about this before it goes live saying I haven't seen it. I'm nervous mm. about it. Um, I'm excited about it. I think it could do a lot of good. And if it doesn't, then I've mm. got to be honest and stand up and say it didn't do it for me. It wasn't yeah. what, I, what I would have done or they're not the creative choices that I would have chosen. Ooh, you know, yeah. the, how would I do it differently? And I'm quite happy to stand up and, and own my opinion on that front. Yeah, I and, think that's important as well. And just because it doesn't work for me personally or us together, it doesn't mean that it won't work for somebody else. So, mm-hmm. you know, I've got to be really mindful that, that this isn't my baby. This is just something of which I am, or we are a part of. Mm. So there is a bit of letting go and, and <laughs> just trying to step back wherever possible. And, and I think that's the risk with it. And that was my final question around what are the risks on this and because, um, and what are the positive outcomes? Mm. And I think for us, there is a bit of reputational risk because, you know, we've, we've, everything that we've put out there has been us. Yeah. Most of the time, at mm, least. It's been authentic yeah. and we, we've stuck to, you know, our, ourselves and, you know, put ourselves across in, in our best possible way. And it would be a shame if that's misrepresented in some way. So reputationally, yes, there's a risk that that's, we, we don't, we're not the sort of people that we really are. <laughs> but, and the risk is like, could we lose friends maybe as a result? Yeah, I don't, I, you know, don't I know. think there is, there is a bit of a, you know, people in our workplaces or sort of estranged family members and all that sort of st- yeah. stuff could come out of the closet, I suppose, much like we will. Um, and, and there is a, <laughs> there is a risk that, that will be treated differently as a result of mm. that. I think for the majority of people who we really care about, we, we've kind of spoken to them about it or spoken to them about what we do. There's one or two that we haven't. And that there's, there are some risks around that. And, you know, with, with work, I suppose anyone that could see us walking down the corridors of work, not right now, mm-hmm. but could go, Oh shit, I recognize that person from that that show yeah. I watched last night. I think we've done enough foreshadowing with, you know, people who we care about and want to sort of give them the, the, the respect and the heads up that this is happening. And, you know, well, it's really it funny, want, really, but... because I, I'm not going to give any way, away any details on this, but mm-hmm. we, you were watching a program the other night, weren't you on, um, on Netflix and someone that we know was in oh, that, that program. Yes. Now, don't say who I'm it is. I, I, know I promise you. Yeah, okay. So you were watching a program on Netflix and uh, you called me upstairs and we're like, Look at this, watch this. And we and watched some it. people and that we know were pe- on the programme. Yeah, and that was kind of strange. And, it was strange. And I guess that's going to be some people's experience in that they'll be watching something on television or watching something on, on a catch-up yeah. service and go, oh, How weird. I know and, them. But my overall feeling at the time when that when it happened and I saw the people I recognised, I was actually like, oh, wow, I know the people. These people, they're lovely. Yeah. <laughs> it was a real sort of, 
Yay, I know these people. Of course, with us, there's equal chance yeah. that you might go, oh, wow, I know them. Those guys are cunts. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hate them. <laughs> Such bastards. <laughs> my, my Actually, I, I am obviously perpetually worried about this anyway, but I'm always worried about how I look, you know, body image wise, because that's never really far from my mind at the moment, because eh, that's that. Um and I'm trying to cast my mind back to January and trying to decide on what side of the Jabba the Hutt figure I was at that stage. <laughs> probably not a great <laughs> side. I, I, I'm thinking you were probably the um, the Jabba that was Answer inserted carefully. into A New Hope. You know, like the special edition Jabba where he's a little bit younger, a little bit slimmer. Um, you what? Han Solo stands on your tail. Oh my God. Fans were outraged at, at the inclusion <laughs> of the scene, which should never have been put back oh, into oh. it. I'm the slightly slimmed down jab of the hut that was reinserted into Star yeah. Wars. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, I, that was the only slim jabba that I could remember. <laughs> Oh. I mean, you weren't the complete sort of CG mess that was jabbering. I don't know, like the um, the Clone Wars <laughs> animated thing. That, you know, <laughs> is it too late for me to contact uh, nineteen television and tell them to Photoshop a little bit of chunk out? <laughs> I asked them to put more on. To be fair, <laughs> <laughs> bulk you out. Don't we say the camera adds ten pounds? Yes, that's catastrophic. No, I, don't, I can't afford to put another ten pounds on. It only adds ten pounds if you're carrying the fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really heavy camera. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, that, that's my worry, actually. But um, I, I'm just going to be horrified at how I look, which is, you know, very selfish, of, you know, very shallow of me to have that, you know, worry. But well, of course I'm going to worry because I genuinely don't want people to look at me and go, oh, my God, wow, to, she's fat as fuck. <laughs> to be fair, Mrs. H, mm. we posted a picture of you quite recently on Twitter. Because mm. you were having a bit of a crisis and you took a selfie that you, were, a that you were happy about. <laughs> and a lot of people were very, very complimentary about you. I know. And you they did look lovely. really nice. So I, I don't think you've got anything to worry about. Okay. Um, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to put you on a treadmill for six days. Six days? Are you going to put a Cheeto at the end of it so I run faster? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, six days, are, you know, that's the warm up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Um, and I'm also I can't I genuinely can't remember if my um, if my Babylons are out and about in this program. I don't think they are. I hope not. <laughs> you hope not. Yeah, I'm kind of like oh, I know we didn't do anything nudie and it's Channel Four, not Pornhub, but equally I can't remember. <laughs> it's basically um, sixty minutes of your tits <laughs> with a running commentary. Oh, it's going to be fantastic, right? Stop okay. saying running. <laughs> You're trying to like. <laughs> Neurolinguistic program me into wanting to go for a run after. I'm just trying to jog your memory. Ah, oh, good grief. Come on. Keep me on track, no doubt. Yes, don't sprint to finish, dear. <laughs> Anyways, um, what we're going to do now is um, we're going to wrap up this little section and then we're going to jump on to uh, the uh, Kiwi and Cherie. Yes. Can not jump onto them, literally. Well, no. no, God, no. No, because that wouldn't be good or safe. Especially not in this climate. No, exactly not mm. this climate. So anyways, um, to, to sum up, uh, TV show... August the 24th in the UK, 10 p.m. Channel 4. Swingers, look mm -hmm. out for it. Record it, record it, TiVo it, whatever the fuck it is that you do. And give uh, us feedback, actually. I'd love to hear what people think. Yes, give us feedback that's positive. <laughs> <laughs> Don't just be like, you guys are a bunch of asshats. Please just try and try and just like soften the blow oh, a little bit. Dear. We're, we're we're quite delicate, yeah, really. Yeah, we are delicate little flowers. Well, one of us is delicate. The other of us needs to jog for six weeks, apparently. Am I more of a <laughs> delicate pine tree or something? <laughs> delicate pine cone. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, don't forget to join the quiz uh, with Angela and Bradford from By the By at 9pm on the 22nd of August. Yeah. And finally, please get some tickets to the virtual PCAP event on the 28th to the 30th of August. It's going to be awesome. Uh, we would love to see you there and we'd love to entertain you. Mm. We're going to come up with some fun stuff to do and to talk about and we may even talk about the TV experience a little bit more because by that point it will have aired. <gasps> oh my God, by that point we'll have seen it. Holy and fucking shit yeah. bags. Anyway, um, thanks for joining us. Um, have a, a lovely couple of weeks and enjoy the dulcet tones of Kiwi and Sherry. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 23 of Sharing is Caring. I'm Kiwi. And I'm Sherry. Well, I say sharing is caring, but actually it's sharing the bed. It's a crossover. Here we have... <laughs> well, it's Mr. H here from the Bed Hoppers, along with... Mrs. H. Oh, also from the Bed Hoppers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we clearly finished each other's... 
Sentences. Sausages. I'm remembering this now. We're so good at this. We're well, almost... You tricked me into it before and I didn't know what I was supposed to say. Oh, uh, okay. Good. Thank you. Uh, Thank you for letting us crash your party. Hey, no, we're crashing your party. We're actually on holiday down this direction and we got a lovely offer from Mr. and Mrs. H to come and spend some time with them. So we've had a very socially distant visit yeah. to eat lots of food and podcast from across the room. It's good. You're right down there, guys. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm not sure I would call that socially distant. <laughs> Can you pass the salt, please? <laughs> Go long. <laughs> We've been quite socially distant. We've been yeah. good. We've yeah. only occasionally touched them, and even then, it's with a uh, like a hand mounted on a stick. <laughs> <laughs> it's tie the gin and tonics at the end of a broom and just shove it across the table. We use the pets by proxy to touch. Yeah, it's we've like... just been writing notes on Yoko's collar and sending her to the other side of the room so that Aww. they can read the note. Our pets have loved them. We just haven't left them alone. I know, treacherous <laughs> bastards. We need to come and visit more just so we can just play with your pets. pets. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and That's to see right. you guys. Yes. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so this is a update episode. It's a mini episode where we're going to talk a bit about where have we been and why haven't we been releasing so much lately and why won't we be releasing quite as regularly in the future? That sounds sad. <laughs> it is sad. It's sad, but also it's happy, I hope. It is. It is. I mean, one of the main reasons we haven't been doing much was the COVID, obviously. Like yeah. everyone, I hope, uh, who have been uh, cautious in these times, uh, we have been. But there's another reason. <laughs> oh, Tell us more. What's that other reason that you're talking about here? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was so cheesy. <laughs> well, I'm pregnant. Ooh. Yay. 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 We thought she was just like, super hungry. But is is there like a pregnancy song that people should sing? Like, like happy birthday. Every baby, sperm, baby every sperm is sacred. <laughs> is that? No, no, that's probably not right. Is it? <laughs> every sperm is sacred. No. no, that's, that's anti-pregnancy, if anything. No, I think it's quite pro-pregnancy as a song. So, yeah, well, you can sing that then. No, it just doesn't feel <laughs> right to be singing that. But congratulations to you both. Yay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I mean, you knew already. You can't really yeah. miss it <laughs> <laughs> at this stage. <laughs> Sherry, you've put on a lot of weight. <laughs> it's very localized. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for this episode, Mr. and Mrs. H are going to be asking us a few questions about. Well, the pregnancy and how it's changed or has it changed our outlook on the lifestyle and various other aspects of our life. So my first question is, how do you get pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> well, we saw each other from across the bar and I smiled and she smiled and then I winked. And the next thing I knew. <laughs> I've got a question first off then. All right. <clears throat> on a scale on, I wrote this down because I liked it. On a scale of pinto bean being very small to watermelon being very big. How pregnant are you? Oh, I'm not sure I'm at a watermelon on stage quite yet. <laughs> You're pregnant, Ave. <laughs> <laughs> so would you say that you are the size of a Nintendo Entertainment System? Is that <laughs> roughly the right size? <laughs> That's not a reference that works for a, me. A small shoebox? <laughs> <laughs> These are all very square objects. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. How about, I'm quite round. Are actually. you the size of a curled up Yoko? <laughs> well, I was with pinto beans and watermelons, smaller. which are both <laughs> spherical, so... I think know. a coconut, a green coconut. Oh, yeah, because yeah. it's not ripe yet. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's not ripe. Well, coconuts That's usually quite... are green when they're on the tree, and then yeah. it's just in the supermarket that they're all brown and huskless. So, oh. would you say that you, you're beyond having a mild case of pregnancy and have it? Yeah, yeah, I'm properly big now. Third trimester big and Aww. feeling like it as well. You look sensational. Yes. Thank you. Definitely. Glowing, in fact. I'm like, you're the picture of health. That's because we what... painted her with luminescent paint. <laughs> <laughs> and also month and month without any alcohol would do yeah. that to you. Oh. <laughs> and healthy eating. Yeah. Trying. <laughs> but sitting here, you'd hardly tell. It's hidden under the table. So the top half of you just looks, well, your boobs look a lot bigger. Yeah. I'm quite happy with that. Aww. That was said with a big grin on my face. You can't hear that through the <laughs> microphone. But No, there is a song for that, which is something about a lovely bunch of coconuts. Maybe. <laughs> How, what's it been like having bigger boobs? Has that been fun? Oh, it's been great. I've loved it. At first, it, they were quite painful. So I, I liked the look of them, but I couldn't really touch them or have Kiwi touch them. <laughs> it was a hard time. It was troubling. <laughs> so quite it was literally. So I got through it, you know, and this this whole... 
traumatic experience that I'm going through at the moment. <laughs> and, and there's this whole lockdown, but not being able to touch Sherry's boobs was is the hardest. Because they were looking better than before, but no touching. <laughs> no touching. <laughs> Have you been taking loads of pictures, though? No. No, we haven't, actually. Well, of Kiwi not touching them. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine her just taking loads of topless <laughs> selfies and just sending them over, but still with no touchy. <laughs> I've taken one selfie recently. Yeah. Um, but that's all. I, yeah. No, this we, is a good time to take lots of photos and remember how your body changed. We've taken photos ones. every week of my body changing, oh, that's but good. not sexy one ah. yeah just normal pictures challenge accepted <laughs> we did have quite a good discussion last night about taking some of the same poses or photos when you weren't pregnant but with your pregnant body and yeah. having the comparison next to each other yeah that would be cool that would be a good like you, like a morph gif that you could have so it animates and it sort of does all this whizzy bang stuff the likes of which I'm demonstrating with my hands but for listeners out there you can't see me talking about it was very whizzy bangy yeah thank you whizzy I appreciate bang. that Mr. Mm-hmm. you've got more questions Oh, I do. Yeah, because I wrote all these questions down for I once. know, right? Prep. I know. I know. How did it feel to be prepped, Mrs. H? Wait, hang on. Mrs. Mrs. Preparation H? You're, you're, you're turning like more <laughs> questions on me. <laughs> uh, no, I was, I was really interested um, to find out how pregnancy has kind of affected your play style so far. And obviously there's been a pandemic, which, you know, will significantly affect anyone's play style anyway, you would hope. Can I jump in on this one a little bit as well we and, do. and add to it? How has it affected your play style with other people and together? Mm, well, those the are question was very aspects. big anyway. It was like a big question. Which yeah, I there's was another six, six sentences to go before we've got to the end of this question. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, is many parts. But yes, generally speaking, I was wondering how it affected your play style in terms of you know, you obviously, you know, you practice non-monogamy. <clears throat> Has that now changed things? Are you, you know, are you changed how you, you intend to play in the future? Have you, does it change how you play now? That kind of thing. Oh, Sherry, you're very good at handling big things. So I'll <laughs> let you kick off with this. <laughs> <laughs> well, my lib- libido has been um, affected quite a bit by the pregnancy. Uh, not for the best, unfortunately. Uh, between- Other than sporadic moments of it just jumping through the roof. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it has had up and downs, but mostly downs, I would say. First trimester, I felt a bit crap, like feeling uh, morning sickness and just not being great in my body. So that didn't help. Second trimester, I felt a bit better, but my libido was not great still. You With- should feel great in your body. You look beautiful. <laughs> and uh, now that I'm in third trimester, I just feel a bit like a whale. <laughs> I know I don't oh. look like one, but um, the feeling is here. So it doesn't make me feel very sexy. Um, so in terms of play between us two, it's been a lot less than before, I would say. Yeah. But Kiwi's been very understanding, not forcing me, thankfully. Have you been writing <laughs> him IOU notes throughout the course of this? Has he got like a stack of them in his wallet ready to dish That's out? That's a great suggestion. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, no, he's been really accommodating and uh, as you should. Yeah. But, uh, not everyone is as understanding, I guess. And we've we've still had sex every so often, but yeah, on a smaller scale as before. But I orgasm a lot more easier than before. That's definitely Ooh. true. So it's an upside to the whole thing, yeah. See, I can imagine myself abusing that facility quite a lot. <laughs> have you been in that space? You just have to touch and suddenly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not quite that easy. <laughs> that winking thing is true then. <laughs> <laughs> Hands free. So what's your outtake on it, Kiwi? Yeah, I, I definitely agree that your libido has dropped off a lot and we're sadly not having as much sex as we were but i think it's it's the right thing to do and that's what if you're not in the mood then there's no point in us having sex just if i want to and you do it just for me because then you won't enjoy it as well and i feel like by trying to be as understanding as possible that makes you feel like it's within your hands it's your power when you actually want sex and you will ask for it rather than me trying to pester you and pester you and then you'll feel like oh I'm not in the mood at all. I don't want to do that at all. It's yeah. more likely to actually happen if I step back a bit more and keep letting you know that I'm interested, but not trying to push anything. That's so true, actually. I found that once you stepped back and just didn't try to initiate, um, it gave me the space to to feel like I wanted it and 
initiate myself yeah. a little bit. Not not often, but um, still, rather than feeling like I'm a prey and he's always trying and me having to f- fend him off, <laughs> which <laughs> has not ho- happened <laughs> really. <him> but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, no, I have to say no again. The fact that you l- give me the space to just be the one who comes for it. I think the important nice. thing is not just not initiating, but it's also letting you know that I am still interested in. I'd like to, if you're in the mood, rather than you just feeling like I'm not interested at all, because that could make you feel like this is me just making assumptions about how you might feel, but mm. that might make you feel like I'm not interested at all. No, no, I certainly know that you're interested. <laughs> you've, been, <laughs> you've been really positive about my, my body as well, my new boobs. Um, that excellent, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> they're good. I mean, they're, they're still quite small, but... Um, they're a good shape for my body now. I think it's really important to consider as well that, you know, you've mentioned it already, but there is a bit of a COVID crisis going on across the globe. Mm. And that's put us all in very different positions and a different sort of mindset, really, because, you know, uh, we, we found that we've kind of our, our whole sort of play situation, not not outside because we're not playing with people, um, but our play with each other has been quite different. And it sort of took a bit of time to get into the uh, swing of things really with each other again in a way (laughs) because you are locked down you are with each other 24 hours a day i think you guys have been working at home quite a lot yeah um and that it's going to have an impact because you're literally in each other's faces all the time um most of the time i think that's a really good positive thing Mm. but you know i'm sure there's moments where that might drive one to a level of insanity i'm blinking three times that means please send help (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'll get you another drink. That's a help. <laughs> and, and we were in a very small flat until well last week, actually, when we moved to a much larger place. But it was a very small flat together. But I think we have found being in lockdown together to be very positive for our relationship, and has brought us a lot closer rather than being at each other's throats and drawing us apart. And we're very lucky in that aspect because I know yeah. that's not true for everyone. I found that we turned into a, one of those sickeningly sweet couples. <laughs> No, you've always been sickeningly sweet. Oh, Don't okay. worry, you're not turned into it. Uh, but I think the lockdown also didn't help with, with the libido because mm. um, as we've discussed before, uh, it's not just in your, your hormones. It's also getting ready to go out, prettying yourself up, mm. uh, making an effort. When you go out and seeing people, it's more stimulating as well. And we didn't have all, all those um, stimuli. Mm. So also, I think that probably didn't help. And not as much exercise. We went from going to the gym two, three times a week to, well, not going to the gym at all and just having the odd walk. Or well, you're doing workouts most evenings, but having regular exercise really helps with libido as well. But you've also mentioned, and you snuck this, this in quite nicely, that you've moved house as well. So congratulations on the new Thank house. You. Um, well done for moving and dealing with pregnancy and a global pandemic. Yeah. So, you know, overall, you've. I think that's the holy trifecta, isn't it? I was going to say, that's pretty like stressful things all up there in, in the perfect storm of making people really stressed out. Like moving house in a pandemic isn't easy anyway. Oh. We had an unbelievable amount of stuff for living in a one-bedroom flat. I don't know where we fit it all. I'm taking the blame. Well, you're going to get a whole <laughs> no, a load more of unbelievable stuff with children. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so we found out before lockdown, as well before any of the coronavirus stuff hit and all kicked off, and we did play with people a couple times while pregnant in the very, very early stages. Once was when we didn't actually know. Once was when we suspected, but we weren't completely sure. We weren't really playing then. It was just kissing out at a at a bar and things like oh, that. Yeah. And then <laughs> once was when we did actually know and we told them. Mm-hmm. And um, then it progressed and it was a bit of play in the evening. But it was still super early when I wasn't showing at all. Yeah, you'd never know other than the fact that you weren't drinking. Yeah. Do you feel differently now that your body shape has changed so much? Do you think that's an impact on your decision not to, other than the pandemic? But A little bit. Um, I think it affects my self-confidence a little bit um, because I'm, well, obviously my body is not the same as before and I was quite happy with my body before. Um, also, the fact that I can feel the baby kick <laughs> inside, uh, sometimes even during sex, <laughs> it's a bit weird. Um, so that's a bit off-putting to me. It's like a weird 
unwanted threesome. <laughs> but, but it's a great story to wheel out to the kids later on when they're older. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, no. Do you think there's um, an element of, um, do you think the perception is different from other people that people might judge you for wanting to swing while you're pregnant? And do you think people might judge you and think, oh God, you shouldn't be doing that now you're a mother to be. You shouldn't be playing around with yeah, other people. Probably. I know that I'm not especially attracted by um, by pregnant women myself. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to, for me to imagine someone wanting to play with me mm -hmm. being so obviously pregnant. So that I think affects also the fact that I don't really feel like playing with other people at the moment. I think a lot of people also consider when you're pregnant, you are a mother and mm. a mother doesn't have as much sexuality. Their role is to be a nurturing person, not to go out and express themselves in, well, whatever fashion, but especially not sexually with other people outside of the marriage. Yeah, it's a bit of the binary. You're a slut or you're a saint. And when you're pregnant, you're more in the saint kind of mm. box, even though you're not necessarily, but that's how people look at you. So people now see you as maternal rather than a sexually desirable yeah, person. Yeah, except Kiwi. <laughs> <laughs> Have you talked about playing separately, though, as a result of this? So if you're not having or, or as interested in sex right now, have you talked about perhaps um, Kiwi going off and doing his own thing? Well, actually, yeah, we have. And I have actually gone and played separately a couple of times Ooh. when Sherry is not in the mood and it's late at night and just go to the living room and take out the laptop. and. <laughs> <laughs> But not playing with other no, people. No, not with other people. No. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't talked about it. I think that's not part of our play style. No. For us, it's about doing it together. Cool. Is that your questions? Is it? Oh, okay. All right. Um, I was going to ask um, if if you would have still have gone to Cap Dagged in your pregnant state, assuming COVID crisis wasn't mm. thing. We considered it before the whole lockdown uh, happened. We we mentioned maybe going for a long weekend um, earlier in the pregnancy, maybe in the second trimester. Yeah. But uh, obviously that couldn't happen. Uh, but that it would be a very different experience in CAP. I think it would be very welcoming to pregnant, pregnant women because um, there's people there of all different body shapes and people with seen people in wheelchairs without limbs and all sorts of things. So I think as a pregnant woman, people wouldn't think twice or judge you or bat an island. I think you would probably get more attention being pregnant. A lot of people would come over to you and want to chat to you and and find out. And but Also, it's not always just about the playing cap. It's also about the being mm. naked and yeah. just yeah. living naked for a few days. Uh, so we don't have to play. I mean, we probably would have. Because the atmosphere there is so sexy that you end up, you know, losing your mind and wanting to play. <laughs> Although it might be quite different if one of you is drinking and one of you isn't. Yes, that's also something I thought about because um, each time we've been to Cap, I've been drinking quite a lot mm. just to get in the, in the mood and the party time and all that. So I'm not sure how that would have gone down, but we probably would have gone. Yeah, mm. I think so. And in a way... This whole lockdown has come at a perfect time for the pregnancy. <laughs> I'm not saying that's a good thing. It's terrible and it's no. It's the pregnancy that's come at the, at the and, right time in the yeah. end. But it's, for a lot of people, I imagine it's been the cause of their pregnancy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Yes, yeah. this was before the lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> but in a way, it means that we don't feel guilty about if we decided not to go to CAP and we really wanted to go again this year or we feel like we're missing out on parties or seeing yeah. our friends and those sorts of things. And we don't have to make that decision. That decision is made for us because of the pandemic. We definitely aren't going to play with anyone. And it, it allows us to have a guilt-free way of making that decision and it takes it out of our hands. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I would feel a bit guilty as in, oh, we can't play with those people or there's a party we we don't want to go to because of the pregnancy and we're missing out because of me being mm -hmm. pregnant. Because Kiwi can drink and it's not a problem. It's it's me and also... He's proved this weekend he can drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He has definitely put a few drinks away. I've <laughs> got to represent New Zealand. I doff my cap to you. <laughs> <laughs> but in other aspects as well, outside of the lifestyle, we 
were doing a lot mm. over the last year or so because we knew that we wanted to try and have a baby at some point. And if it worked, great. If it didn't work, great. We're really happy together as a couple and we don't necessarily need to have a baby to improve on that. So we were trying to do as much as we could in the lead up to pregnancy so that we felt like we got the most out of those years without having a child. So I think this whole lockdown has eased the transition to having a child where it's not going to be going directly from being out every night, having dinner with friends, going for drinks, seeing a show to now you have a baby and you're not going to leave the house for a while. So it's eased that transition. At the rate we're going with this pandemic, by the time that um, <laughs> you know it, it, it eases up, it, there's a good chance you'll have you'll have had the baby, and there have been a number of months on top of it. Child will be, be off to school. college. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, they'll be off to college. Um, How so, is your four-year-old? Yeah, <laughs> exactly that. So, w- what's your thoughts on playing again? Is your intention that you'll get back into the lifestyle once um, you're, you're feeling com- confident again, or wh- where do you see the future? I'll let you start off with that one. Ooh. Uh, we haven't really chatted about it. Uh, we'll... No better time than the present. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I can't see us never going back. Do you say you can see us never going no, back? No, I can't. I okay. Can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, I'm working out the, the double negative. The look of fear on your face. No, no, no. Uh, I think it's, I mean, when it goes well, it's something that once you start, you just can't stop. Once you pop, you can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the question mark is on the timeline. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that really is it. It's something which brings so much to our relationship beyond just sex. It's all of the amazing people we'll meet along the way and how it improves our relationship. Brings us together. Yeah. Our body confidence and just there's so many aspects of it, which it, it provides a lot to our lives beyond just sex. And I, I think I would have a hard time removing that part of my life. Do you think it's going to really change the way that you play? Because you guys have obviously you've been able to at a moment's notice go, let's go out and go to the pub. And having a child is quite a definite change of, of life. Have you kind of thought that through and had a had any chats about how it might influence things in the future like that? I guess we'll have to be a bit more organized, but I think it's not the end of the world. I think it's just I mean, we left finding ours a babysitter. With tins of beans and you know, an open cupboard, so they were fine for a number of hours. <laughs> Here's some canned spaghetti and a lighter. Yeah, exactly. So you've got all of uh, lockdown to figure out some some decent babysitting <laughs> before the world goes back to normal, right? Yeah. I think for us and you especially, you very you very much aren't someone who's spur of the moment and decide, let's do this tonight. Do you like to have a plan? Almost a week in advance. I have we to have a build to, up in my mind yeah. to be in the mood. I can't just, yeah, can't just decide, oh, let's rock up to a club tonight. It has to be something that I've uh, geared myself up for. You're, you're very different in the way that you'd be happy to, to say, oh, let's, let's go to a nudist beach today. And I'm like, oh, wait, I'm not, I'm not ready mentally. Sometimes that spontaneity can add an element to it, I find. Yeah. yeah. But a week seems like enough time to find a babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> Does it? I don't know. I don't know about babysitters. <laughs> Good luck with the future, man. Good luck with the future. <laughs> so, if we jump to the far, far future, right? Kid or children are starting to grow up a little bit. Do you tell them about your lifestyle? Oh, that's a really, really interesting. That's a really interesting question. That's a really tough call. I Stop think stalling. <laughs> <laughs> Half an hour later. Oh, I still don't well, know. Have my idea. I definitely want to bring up like age appropriate sex education and parenting and that sort of thing. I I think it depends on the relationships that we have at the time. And if there are people that we're particularly close with and whom we would introduce to our children, then maybe from the beginning, just letting mm. them know what sort of relationship it, it is and just it being normal. But if it's, if we're just going out from time to time or meets or to the old party or something like that, it's not something which I think I would let them know early on. There would have to be something which is much later on once they can actually understand and comprehend the implications of it rather than just being mummy and daddy or off having sex with other people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not keen on the idea of um, telling our child or children about it. What if they find the podcast? They wouldn't. We'll send it to them. Don't you worry. <laughs> we'll turn up wearing your branded shirts. We'll be okay. By and the time you... they grow up, podcasts won't be a thing anymore. What? Heartbreaker? <laughs> Good grief. 
don't worry, this thing, this additional bit of the hobby that we all enjoy won't exist anymore. <laughs> Thank you, Shireen. <laughs> all this hard work and time and effort we've put into it. No, we'll see. But um, at the moment, my first thought is, oh, oh God, no. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, that's my first impulse. Why do you think it's because other people will then uh, judge them by association with what you've told them or because you just don't feel comfortable telling them? I don't feel comfortable telling them. And also, I think any kid who's a bit different in school gets already bullied. Like if they mm. have uh, same sex parents, for example, mm. or anything a bit different. So I don't want to be the reason for the child to go through a rough patch. True, but do you not think things have moved on sufficiently now that people are more accepting of, you know, different family arrangements now than ever? Family arrangements, yes. Swinging, I think there's still <laughs> quite a bit of a stigma around it. Yeah. So do you think this is going to open you up to a whole new selection of people that you're going to meet because, you know, sort of new play groups, new school, school gates. Yeah, oh my school God, gates. like mums and toddlers groups. <laughs> <laughs> the mums and toddlers ethical non-monogamy group. Yeah, you can start the business card <laughs> now. And, yeah, be handing them out as you're going along. Oh, there's a hot mum dropping off the kid. Yep, there we go. Just slip one of those in the uh, in the car windscreen. You'll be fine. Would you be like swilfs instead of milfs? <laughs> yeah. Swingers are like fuck. <laughs> 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 we'll look at the NCT classes with a whole new light now. Oh my god! Oh, do you not drop it into every conversation like I do? By the way, we do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> What's the podcast about? Couldn't possibly tell you. All right, you've twisted my arm. It's about swinging. <laughs> <laughs> if you insist, yeah, insist absolutely. The, the the children thing is an interesting one because, as you know, if I could go back and do things all over again, I would hundred percent be honest and tell children. Just Mine. not our children, just Any children. children. Any <laughs> child. Back to waiting outside the school gate again. And- yeah. We're going to make our own Minions film where it basically explains that we are swingers. Yeah, but hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? And I've, you know, I've got my reasons for that. But absolutely, you, you, people should do what they, they feel most comfortable with. But yeah. what, I, what I will say, though, is, um, and we've been honoured to spend some time with you over the last uh, couple of days, um, is that I, we absolutely believe that you guys are going to be amazing parents because of the way that you've mm. taken care of our dog. You've, oh. our cat. <clears throat> you've, you've made sure that we're all safe. And yeah. yeah, it's been fantastic. So we think that you guys will be amazing, but also sexy parents Couldn't as well. Couldn't happen to nicer people. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we're so excited for you. And when you get back to the likes of style, don't forget to think about us. (laughs) (laughs) We do all the time. (laughs) And I'm sure raising a child is no more difficult than looking after Yoko. Or a Tamagotchi. Exactly. (laughs) Although I did babysit someone's Tamagotchi years and years ago, and I kept on feeding it until it sadly died. Is it like looking after Nintendogs? You know, because all over the world now, I'm guessing there's lots of dead Nintendogs. Yeah, this is this is true. So we discovered Mrs. H's um, Nintendo DS uh, a while ago, and um, we opened it up, and it still had some power left. And she'd oh, been playing God. Nintendogs, with, which, if you've never heard of it, the, the our concept was that you uh, raise a little puppy and look after it, and you give you know you clean it and feed it. it sounds really cute. It's, it it sounds, does sound cute. It sounds beautiful and nice. But if you don't do that for the best part of twelve <laughs> whole years, then the dog Mm-mm. doesn't look so hot. I mean, they, they has, has a lot of fleas. Yeah, they don't oh, die. They just look really, really sad. Because the game wouldn't really kill the dog, let's face it, because that would be barbaric. Mm. Mm. But it is not in good shape, I would imagine. I'm just picturing the dog from Futurama. (laughs) Don't don't ever speak of that dog in Futurama because he's in for a rough night if you do. We we watched that once and, and cry. Um, 12 hours later, she was still inconsolable. Oh, oh. Yeah. I think I probably had a nosebleed. I was so traumatic. And... The only thing that will help <laughs> is buying me a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I had to go and have a bath and a glass of wine. Calm down. Sit down, shower, cry, yeah. cry wank. No, there was no wanking involved. <laughs> oh, in my head there was. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You're a wrong one. You really are. <laughs> However, yes, that was fun. I haven't got any more questions. Oh, good. Nicely no. summarised. No, 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 no more right. questions then. No. Do you want to do a wrap up? No more questions, Your Honour. Um, <laughs> yes, but first we've forgotten one of the most important pieces of the news which have happened recently. Since lockdown, I've decided to stop shaving and grow a beard. How did we overlook this? Yes, the beard. It's, I, I'm so used to it now that it's just blended now. It's what I expect to see when I see your face. It needs its own segment. It is a magnificent beard. It's truly tremendous. Mm. Yeah. It's a good wood chopper's beard. I think it I'm going really to move is, to the bush yeah. and quit my job, <laughs> just have an X and survive. I'll have to come out from time to time. You too. look like a lumberjack. Yeah. I think because we haven't been meeting other people, it's been a good opportunity to grow a beard. 
as soon as we start meeting people again, I think the beard has to come off. It's not a sexy beard. It's a, oh, it's a great beard. It's like magnificent. It. I like it. I was yeah. led to believe that you're hiding both food and condoms in it, so just so in, in case you need them at a moment's notice. It's a utility beard. Batman has a belt. I've yep. got a beard. Exactly that. I think the beard needs its own Instagram page. Yes. <laughs> it's like it's developed its own personality and great beard. Such mm. a good colour as well. Yeah. Oh, why, thank you, everyone. Why you had to dye it pink, I'll never know. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's the best colour. Exactly. <laughs> oh. All right. So thank you, everyone, for listening to the very short update episode of where we've been and where we're going to be for the next while. And thank you very much, Mr. and Mrs. H for joining us or it's, us for joining you. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure and, and thank you for having us. And how can people find you? Um, well, they mostly hunt around outside in our bins, so they seem to know where we already are. But if you want to send us an email, it's bedhopperssuck at gmail.com. <laughs> and are you on Twitter? We are at Twitter. Are. Also, bedhopperssuck. <laughs> how convenient. <laughs> So you can find us on Twitter at Kiwi and Sherry. You can reach us via email at Kiwi and Sherry at gmail.com. And you can find us on the internet at sharing is caring podcast.com. And remember, sharing is caring. Are you doing this one or am I doing this? Who's doing this one? What is it you want me to say? <laughs> Only the intro. What do I need to say for it? <laughs> oh, my fucking days. I'll do this one, shall I? <laughs> I might break habit of a lifetime. <laughs>